Hello everyone and welcome to MTC's inaugural webinar on leading from a distance. Thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> I'm Neil Smith, I head up the Manufacturing Support Services and I will be chairing the webinar today. The Manufacturing Support Services are the customer facing arm of the Manufacturing Technology Centre, reaching out to manufacturers to understand their challenges and using the expertise of the Manufacturing Technology Centre to solve these. We will be running a short video at the end of the webinar summarizing this. But before we start, I would like to run, some, run through some housekeeping with you. First of all, can I remind you that the session has been recorded so it can be viewed at a later date on the MTC YouTube channel. So you can revisit the content or share with colleagues. Details of this and other information relevant to the webinar will be shared with you in a follow-up email after this event. For the purpose of the webinar, you, the audience, will be in listening mode only with videos and mics turned off. Your viewing options can be adjusted by clicking the View Options tab, which is positioned at the top of your screen. Use a drop down menu you can either, to either show or hide the video panel. During the webinar, we will be inviting you to ask questions using the Q&A function, which is located at the bottom of your screen. Your questions will be answered by our speakers at specific intervals during the webinar. We will try to answer as many as possible, but due to time screen, we may have to be selective. If you're using the chat function, please note that our comments, that your comments will be visible for everyone to see. And you can share anything on social media if you wish. So <clears throat> in today's seminar, which we expect to last about 45 minutes, we have two speakers. Tim Andrews and Darren Massingham. Tim is a lead digital transformation advisor at the MTC with responsibility to support companies in adopting digitalization in their manufacturing processes. Prior to joining the MTC, he spent over 25 years in leadership roles in technology businesses, most recently concerned with the design, development and delivery of cloud-based applications for blue chip FMCG manufacturers. Starting out as a mechanical engineer, he's worked in a range of companies, including British Steel, GKN, and Massey Ferguson. Second speaker, Darren Massingham, is a senior advisor with the transformation team. He joined the MTC in February 2019 and has over 15 years of leadership and lean practitioner experience within a variety of sectors from manufacturing, automotive, utilities, motorsport, and consulting with a track record for leading and coaching teams that deliver sustainable business improvements and upskilling team members at all levels in all sizes of businesses, both national and international. So I'll just quickly run through the agenda for today's webinar. Um, so the, the webinar is titled Learning from a Distance. And this is the objective is to uh, inform you of the different digital tools available to support this and the considered considerations you need to make culturally to make this effective. Um, there will be then a brief introduction to the MTC and catapult centers, followed by the first presentation using digital tools to improve collaboration in remote working by Tim Andrews, how to better use digital tools and making data available in the business. This will be followed by a short Q and A uh, session and then we'll go straight on to the second presentation by Darren Massingham on culture change from a distance, where we'll talk about digital, digital technologies and the new future, and then again, a Q&A session. And finally, there'll be a brief video of Manufacturing Support Services, how you can contact them, and the short exit poll. So let's get the webinar started. I will now hand over, oh, sorry, I will, I will now talk about the MTC and then hand over to uh, Tim Andrews. Okay, the MTC is one of the seven high value manufacturing catapult centers uh, throughout the country, uh, originally set up by the government to, to help British manufacturers be competitive on a global stage. We have over 800 employees on site and we're here to help manufacturing uh, become uh, more productive, so increase productivity, more innovative, and, and become technic, technologically proficient. So we help you identify new technologies and de-risk investing in those technologies. Okay, can we have the next slide, please? 
<clears throat> okay, I'd like then hand over to Tim Andrews on using digital tools to improve collaboration in remote working. Thank you, Neil, uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I've entitled this section, uh, Using Digital Tools to Improve Collaboration in Remote Working. And uh, the aim of the section really is to, to provide some insight into using data visualization to provide better visibility of data in the business, and also to consider some simple steps for implementation. Um, and following that, I'm gonna give a brief overview of some popular collaboration tools that can help support businesses during a period of remote working. Next slide, please. So taking people out of the office usually creates a number of challenges, uh, and this often falls in, in three key areas, that of people, processes, and technology. And for people, there's the obvious one of a sense of isolation and that greater need for regular contact. But also there's a, a, a need for clear goals and expectations where you don't have that informal day-to-day -day, uh, conversation. Um, and another key thing is being able to access information uh, to enable people to do their jobs. And Darren's gonna talk a little bit more about this later in the webinar. When we look at processes, we often realize that actually the processes we use in, in the business aren't as well defined as they need to be. And they're quite heavily reliant on, on manual intervention. So it's, it's, it, this, this will create challenges for you as, you as you move to a remote working environment. And last but not least, technology. When you, when you move from a predominantly site-based uh, IT system to one that's using remote technologies, it can put quite a lot of stress on that system where you're used to accessing folders within various drives, shared drives, uh, that often becomes less easy to do in, a, in, a, in a, a remote environment. And if your business is reliant uh, on using Excel for, for critical data, the ability for people to share that data, to see the latest version, to be able to access it, or even to be accessing the same file at the same time, becomes more of a challenge. And obviously when you're working remotely, paper-based processes uh, typically don't work well in a remote environment. Next slide, please. So taking a look at how to get the benefits of data more widely available in the business. And the challenge here really is seeing what's happening in the business uh, when you can't be there. And so what I'd like to talk a little bit about is how we use data visualization tools to get the right data to the right person at the right time. And this, this isn't a problem that's just confined to remote working. So often the data you have may be locked away in an ERP system or an accounting system. And sometimes it can take many hours of extraction and manipulation to, to, to be able to present it. And these, these results often take several days to be, uh, to be realized and then will be stored again in a file or on an attachment to an e email server. So there's often a lot of wasted resource in preparing data for sharing data. Next slide, please. So one way to make information more widely available is through use of digital dashboards. Uh, these enable uh, up-to-date information to be presented to the relevant person to support their needs. So traditionally, you may collect the data manually. You might then manipulate it in a spreadsheet. You could create a chart and perhaps print it on a display board. But by the time you've done that, this data could be up to a week old. So using data visualization tools or, or business intelligence software, as it's often called, um, enables you to collate, or to automate the collation of that data and to update that information immediately. And this allows people to rapidly respond to changes in information and to make the business more agile in nature. And it helps also be able to identify trends and provide better insight for what's going on in the business. Next slide, please. So the, 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 here are some examples really of digital dashboards that we've created uh, from a project at the MTC. Um, I'm showing the operator dashboard here. So this is this really focuses on finding the relevant information for the person working in that particular area. And so in this one, there there may be a machine operator role. They've got the the, the current schedule of of jobs that that are due to hit on that machine. 
there are uh, this this could be augmented by some uh, machine conditioning data so temperature vibrations spindle speeds etc and then you could also add on uh, some aggregate data such as total volume produced or your current service hours on the machine so you can see when uh, how close you are to the next uh, maintenance event next slide please so if you uh, for for a slight, for a different role such as uh, a supervisory or manager role, you'd want a, a higher level view of what's going on. And here you could look at um, schedule uh, adherence, or you might have time and attendance reporting or machine utilization data. So it's making sure that the data is relevant for, 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 the, for the role concerned. Next slide, please. For an executive or, or, or a business owner, you would want another set of data which might uh, encompass more financial based information. So you might look at order input, uh, you might look at uh, costs, you might have health and safety data. So again, it's, 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 it's that at a, at a glance access to information uh, taken from the relevant system or, uh, or wherever it is residing in the business and making it uh, up to date and present, uh, presented for, for the relevant person. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a, an example of a project we, we undertook with uh, a company, Harris RCS. They're a special, specialist machining company in the aerospace sector, and they were having challenges meeting their production schedule. So we worked with them to unlock some of the data that was sitting within their ERP system and did some work to optimize the schedule, but then undertook uh, a project for data visualization and the work here was involved with being able to present this schedule to the relevant sections across the shop floor and in the offices so that people could see what the work was that was required, what, what was uh, uh, coming up in the future, and also where they sat in terms of progress towards that schedule. Um, it allowed people to, people to understand what their expectations were, and it really did help change the culture within the business in understanding what was needed uh, to be done by when. And the, the results of this project were, were significant. They got a 30% a increase in, in output without uh, increasing the number of people in the business. They, uh, they were able to increase their on time in full performance or their ad adherence to delivery schedule from 80% to 99%. And this was uh, so marked in terms of the change of the business that, it, uh, that uh, they were awarded a, a performance award from their key customer in Cora. So the, 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 the project was really significant in what it did for the business, but they've since then used that to, to augment these, the, this dashboard data by adding in machine, uh, machine data. So they're now starting to look at what else can they put into this data visualization capability to move the business forward. And it, and it is also uh, initiated a number of other digital projects in areas outside of, of, of data visualization. So it's really given a, a, a a, a, a sort of impetus to digitalization projects within the business. Next slide, please. So I want to talk a little bit about tools here. And, and whilst there are many tools available for dashboarding and data gathering, um, the, the MTC are we're completely impartial over choice of this technology. And it's more important to make sure we choose the right tools for the right purpose. But having said that, if you want to start looking at the capabilities of digitalization and, 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 and dip your toe in the water, then a good start point is the Microsoft Power Suite of tools. Um, and the reason for this really is that they're relatively low cost. And if you are an, already an Office 365 business, then, then you, can, you can get them as a relatively low cost uh, premium add-on. Uh, we would use Power BI to collate and visualize the data. But then if you wanted to, or you needed to collect additional data, you might want to then use something like Power Apps to create a digitalized workflow where you can capture data which could then be used in that central data pot that could you to, to, to build those dashboards or to populate those dashboards. Next slide, please. So we've developed a, a dis discovery process really to help a business understand what those data requirements might be. 
And really it comes down to focusing on what's the data that's required by the business to en enable that decision support activity. So the first step really is to understand what the data is that you, that's necessary. The second would be to identify where the data is or whether it needs to be captured and what an an analytics need to take place. We then, go, we then go and look at some of the right tools, plan and design what that solution would be, where the data needs to sit, what are the roles, what are the access needs. Um, and then finally move on to, to uh, looking at developing the dashboards themselves. And the important thing here for us really is to work with the team uh, in the business to, to do the, 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 the embedding of the data and the skills. We very much want it to be the start of a journey for, for an organization to actually start pulling up the, uh, building that data, those uh, data skills within the business so that you can move forward and, 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 and take those projects to the next level and enhance those dashboards. So it's very much owned rather than delivered. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and so with a rapid move to, well, in this section, I'd just like to talk a little bit about some uh, other collaboration tools, which um, with our rapid move to uh, online working, it's meant a, a sort of an incre increase in the, the need to seek other tools out to support that. Now, some of these tools are probably quite familiar to you. You may have used them in out of work social activities. I know Zoom is very popular in that, in that regard. But fundamentally, they are all provided uh, by industrial uh, as industrial solutions. So they've they've got the the backing of larger organisations. In this in this webinar, I'm not really going to give an exhaustive review of the pros and cons, but I just wanted to give a quick overview of some of the most popular ones. Um, and the ones we've chosen to cover here are Google Hangouts, which is part of the, G, the Google G Suite, Microsoft Teams, Zoom. Discord and Slack. Uh, and the fundamental advantage of these teams really is that they provide a, a low cost but efficient way of enabling staff to communicate um, and share information, which is really important in, in a remote working environment. Um, each has a very different interface, but they have a broad range of features. Um, and that the big players are obviously from Google and Microsoft, but the, the, the others are, are, are more niche, but they have their, their, own, their own benefits. They all provide the same basic capabilities, really, in terms of video and audio conferencing, screen sharing, an instant messaging capability, and the ability to file share. And they, they're all on a, a pay-as-you-go subscription model and can be viewed on desktop, mobile, and tablet. So uh, it's, it, these, are, these are tools that are well worth uh, looking at if your business isn't already using them. Next slide, please. So this chart really pro just provides an overview of the core functionality of these, of these five tools. As I mentioned before, they all offer similar feature sets and your choice really would depend on what the best fit is for your organization. If you're a Microsoft Office 365 or a Google G Suite user, I think the choice is clear really. Um, because of the ease of integration with the Office software, it makes sense to, to look at those tools first and foremost. It means you can have a single sign-on that allows you to jump between both the, the applications and the, and the collaboration tools very easy, very easily. And even it has other features such as simultaneous document editing and the like. So for others, the interfaces and the usability features of things like Slack and Zoom are uh, maybe uh, another reason to look at those tools. Um, but, but all of them are very capable in their own way. Um, and many of them actually can have further enhancements by doing things such as task automation and the like. So there's, there's plenty of scope to develop these as part of a process within the business. Next slide, please. So although I've given a very quick overview of, of the tools that we have available, I, I also just wanted to provide a few suggestions really on, on how you might uh, encourage better team engagement. Um, and Darren's gonna talk a little bit more about this in the next section. However, some examples might include uh, running a, a short daily video call first thing to align the team, make sure everybody's there, everybody's fine. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good opportunity to have that check-in. 
Uh, use the uh, group instant messaging chats, and this is very good for uh, informal communications or one-to-one. -one. They're very quick and easy, and it stop it, 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 it takes you away from that that usual email approach. Um, and also to look at things like simultaneous editing of documents and sharing of documents using the, the, the file sharing and collaboration. So that's that's all for my section now. I wanted to thank you for, for listening. Um, and I think we're moving over to the uh, Q&A. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Tim. Okay, um, we've got a few uh, questions from the audience. Um, I'm not sure if this one is, uh, you can answer this, Tim, but uh, this one of the questions has been asked. It says, um, how does MTC have the bandwidth to work remotely when processing FEA, for example, finite element analysis? Um, uh, <laughs> that's a, that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think with with something like FEA, FEA, where you're using, where you may be using uh, the the capability on a remote computer, you'd you'd want to be looking at something like a, a, thin, a thin client um, connection or or a Citrix. But I think it very much de depends on 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 the circumstances. But that that would that would be a, a, a typical solution, but I appreciate that re that requires a little bit more setting up in the, in the first instance. Okay. Uh, and another question we've got here is, we use Apple computer products. What collaboration tools would MTC recommend? Uh, there's a well, mo most of these tools that we've talked about are, um, are, are run through browser-based capabilities. So even if the application that we've described uh, the the tools that I've mentioned earlier are um, uh, you know require an app on the on the on the on the to be downloaded onto the desktop. They do have a, a web capability, and I know that the likes of um, of Zoom and uh, uh, <coughs> will will have a will have a a, a a Mac solution. In fact, I think Microsoft Teams has a, a Mac app as well. So mm -hmm. I think there's quite a lot of crossover. Most of the large players now. Are, are, are wise to providing both um, iOS and uh, and uh, and and Windows uh, applications. So I don't have a particular recommendation. Uh, we're we're, uh, we're 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 quite impartial to uh, technologies. It's it's very much finding one that meets um, meets the, the the requirements for for a particular for a particular use case. So I would suggest any of those tools that we've we've provided um, okay. would yeah. be suitable for for remote engagement. Okay, thank you Tim. Um another question here we've got what software package do you use to, did you use to create the dashboards? Right. Well there there are a wide range of dashboarding products and they all have different range of prices as well. So there's 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 some high end and, and the, there's also the, the, the start points. I mean, the dashboards we showed there were created in a product called Dundas BI, which was uh, uh, one, one of a set of tools that we evaluated while doing a, a project at the uh, at the MTC. Um, but as I mentioned, the if you, if you <coughs> wanted to dip your toe in the water and have a look at some of those capabilities or explore them yourselves, the, the, the probably the lowest cost entry point is, is looking at a tool like uh, Power BI or Power Apps. Yeah. As I say, we're not wedded to Microsoft, but from a pure cost uh, and, and, and entry cost point of view, they're well worthy of a look. And there's also a wide set of skills and, and knowledge base on the internet to support that learning. So what's the typical entry level cost of these, and Tim, would you say? Well, I mean, if you are, if you have a, a, an Office three six five account, I think you're mm -hmm. talking, uh, you know, probably ten pound, ten or fifteen pound a month per user okay. for, for for getting a developer capability in Power BI mm -hmm. or Power App. So we're not talking, you know, it's it's not a big outlay to a business. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, we'll finish off with this question, uh, Tim. Uh, I have worked for companies who require data capture to deliver successful projects. However, when we walk away, human input often disturbs this data flow. How can we minimize this? That's a really good question. <laughs> and, 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 and I think it, it, you know, it, it is an element of, of, of changing behaviors. It, it, it's also defining your process as well, making sure the process is clear that everybody understands what's required of the process and why you're getting the benefits of the information. 
Um, and once I think once people understand why they're doing something and, and see the results of that, so make sure people are engaged as to why you're trying to change behaviors, why you're trying to capture data to support the, the, the business decision making. And I think they're, they're, you know, you're more likely to get people to, to, to recognize that, but it does take time. It takes time to get to, to, for people to get used to a change in process um, and also the, the capturing of, of, of information to support that process. Okay, thank you, Tim. I think we'll conclude there uh, and we'll move on to the um, second presentation uh, by Darren Maskham. Uh, Culture change from a distance, digital technologies, the new future. Over to you then, Darren. Uh, thank you, Neil, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining on this webinar. Um, I just wanted to go through a few points today and share some thoughts and, and experiences um, that I feel that we need to sort of consider in this new way of working, working remotely, and quite a lot of people are working from home. So it's, for me, it's all about, and linking with what Tim said there, is making sure our team members are on board and feeling as comfortable as possible, and we can have a big part to play in that. So, uh, next slide, please. So from a culture change, uh, regardless if it's from a distance or in the facility, we have a roadmap of sort of st the stepping stones of, of what to, to look for and how to develop it. Things from visions and missions, understanding the organizations and defining roles and responsibilities, but also looking at the business as a bigger picture and where are we within our organization maturity through you know, leadership traits and behaviors. But at this moment in time, I just want to sort of focus on step one and really on the vision and mission and how do we how do we communicate this to our team members in the current climate? Next slide, please. So, as we are aware, a, a big emphasis has been on a healthy work-life balance over over many years now. But obviously, during these um, unprecedented times, it's forced us to look into new ways of working. And the work-life balance for our team members and ourselves is more, more and more difficult. So we really need to be aware of that and, how, and using these technologies to help isolate the, um, and reduce the isolation factor that quite a lot of us are feeling at this moment in time. And as leaders, how do we inspire our teams to do so? As Tim's mentioned, the non-stop improvement of technology is helping us to do this and to work remotely. However, we need to still make sure our team members and ourselves are comfortable to do this and how we can set ourselves up to be successful working from home. So next slide, please. I'd just like to sort of emphasize on three sort of steps for us to consider is looking at the vision and mission and i'm not talking about the overall business strategies and things right at this moment in time but it's about how do we want to operate right now in the times that we're in also regarding the company principles and and what our expectations are and and how do we inspire our team members currently next slide please so as always we really need to define what is important for us to focus on it's a great opportunity at the moment for you know leaders of businesses to maybe be having that time to take a step back and look at really what we want to focus on and how do we want to move our businesses forward however for our team members when we're in the facilities we are usually juggling many items and many things but we may not be able to do they may not be able to do that as much right now so we really need to define and give them clarity on what is important for them to focus on Communication. Obviously, once we've decided this and defined this, the communication to our team is critical for anything moving forward. And as Tim has mentioned, there's many platforms out there, but we need to implement an effective communication platform for our teams. And I'm going to move on to the next slide, please, is really how do we then start to look at our company principles and expectations? As I keep mentioning, the team need to feel comfortable when using video conferencing. And I'm talking from a personal experience. Um, you know, if people are not fully aware of the technologies and how to operate them completely, then it can cause anxiety and it actually can cause disengagement because you do not know where, where the expectation is. 
So things like dress codes on meetings. Let's just communicate and what is the expectation there, whether it's internal or in external meetings. Background scenes um, for, for the video conferences is something that really I think some of us forget about. But we have to remember, we are now inviting ourselves into people's homes and that separation of home and work life is, is at the moment is very difficult. Not everybody has a nice comfy home office to work in. I certainly don't. I'm sat in my dining room on a chair with, a, with my son's cushion on. Um, and you know we have to make sure that people are, are happy and comfortable of what people can see around them. First time we had a Zoom meetings, I looked, checked my shoulder to see what everybody else can see. So as a business, maybe using things like Microsoft Teams and Zoom that I know has that function is having a common business background scene. So it just takes that ease of the, of the worry of certain team members of what others can see in their homes. We also need to understand the individual needs and pressures of team members and what their responsibilities are, again, at home at this moment in time, working remotely. Now, I, I have three children and you know, at some points they're coming in and asking me for some, some support, whether it's homeschooling, whether it's for a drink or for lunch. But if, you, if your team members and yourselves are in the middle of a meeting, what is the expectation and what is the agreed of support and guidance we can give for if somebody requires you on a meeting? A bit of housekeeping of turn your camera off or go on mute because you've still got them carers and them people that are dependent on you to take care of as well as working and balancing your work. So we really need to sort of support the team members on that. And most importantly, and ourselves, because we all have that. Next slide, please. So how do we really go about inspiring this new way? I think thinking about some of the, the, the comments I've made already is having them rules, having them guidelines. But again, we also need to understand that people's behaviours and approaches to things may have changed. Now, people may be feeling a lot more pressure trying to juggle that work-life balance because at the end of the day, some people now are actually home is at work and work is at home. There is no sort of get out. There is no break from, from the house or things like that. So it's really, we, we need to be aware of that and support each other through it. Again, be aware this work-life balance is difficult. It's not as easy as people think working from home. Believe you me, I am finding that out more and more each day. But also let's use the technologies that's out there for the socializing and promoting cross-functional teams. I certainly have been in many meetings in businesses where it would have been good to have that particular individual or a department to be involved in a meeting to be able to give that transfer of knowledge and also bring a different perspective and an idea to a situation. But as usual, some people, they're not available. They may be, at, they may be off site. It's, too, it's not worth traveling all that way on expenses. So let's use this technology where possible to invite them into these meetings remotely and be able to get that cross-functional feeling as well and different, different thoughts. And let's not use just this technology for just work. Let's make sure we engage in our team members. So the example that you can see there is what I want to talk about. Technology is a fantastic tool and it's developing all the time and can and continue to keep improving as a, as a business. But I think there was one question before on Tim's, on Tim's speaking is regarding when humans are involved, we need to make sure there is an understanding. And it's not just about throwing technology at it. We need to bring the people along with it. So the example that we've got here is where we, we worked on the reverse side of things. Technology was seen to be the solution, and it is. However, the team needed to be on board and be ready to take this new technology on and, and really thrive with it. So we worked on the culture with the, with the team. What that's done, the impact that culture and in, embedding and in, onboarding the team members can give you is quite dramatic. On this example, within a less than a 12 month period, this particular company was able to increase their sales of around one million pounds. They reduced their lead time by 50% just by organizing and having clear roles and responsibilities and everyone working a bit more together. 
They increase their on-time delivery by, by around about 60%. But also, what we have to remember as well is that due to this um, improvement, it actually meant from a business point of view, we was a, they was able to cut overhead and costs of overtime. Overtime was the norm, as it, it was certainly was when I was working in facilities and running production lines, it became the norm. But they didn't actually need the overtime anymore because we was being more, they was being more productive. They gained creditation nine months ahead of schedule on ISO 9001 and 14, which was, uh, which was an uphill struggle, to say the least, at the very start. But as a business, they also backed their team members because, yes, we've made the improvements and incre increased the sales and reduced lead time. So giving something back as well uh, to the team members, they were able to, to generate a 5% pay rise due to the direct results of gaining the certifications and output. So you may be thinking, well, how does this link to technology that we're talking about? The team are now in a better position to really Im um, embed and develop, bringing more further and further technologies into the business. We start, they started manually with visualizing schedules and production plans because there was a fear factor of, we go technology, what does that mean to us all? Is it going to mean loss of jobs? Is it going to mean I'm not going to be upskilled enough? I don't have the technology, the, the technology background. So we really wanted to get things visual and basic. Now they're on board with that culture change. We can now take it to the next level of working with what Tim was saying on dashboards and visually putting things out into the shop floor because they understand it and they have been part of developing the information that the technology now can take over and take a lot of the human element out of it and the time of it. Team members have clear roles and responsibilities, but they also have their company direction and alignment. So, you know, culture is a big play, part to play in introducing technologies. It's how do we embed it? Next slide, please. So at the MTC, we try to pra we practice what we preach. And what we try to do to help our, our colleagues is working remotely is remember, we all talk about obviously health and safety. We need to make sure even when at home, our colleagues are keeping a, um, an eye on and we're supporting them with workstation safety and making sure their ergonomics and, and is set up and to support their productivity. Again, not everyone has nice offices and home offices with nice chairs and dual screens and things like that. So we just need to make our team members be aware. Your safety and the, and the workstation is just as critical now, if not more, working from home as it is in the offices and in the facility. We need to make sure it's important of thinking of others when holding meetings. We've all had back-to-back -back meetings, I, I would suggest, and it's a just need to, you know, a break for a moment. So make sure we're checking people's diaries. And also, if we can't avoid back-to-back -back meetings, think about finish 10 to the hour or 5 to the hour just to give that five, five or 10 minutes of you know, reset, think about what's just been happened. And this isn't just for our team members, but it's also for ourselves. A comfort break, a grab of a drink. For me, just make sure the kids haven't, haven't, haven't blown the house up or something. But, but having that break, just to reset yourself and go again. Dress appropriately. So we, we, you know, we, we have our sort of guidelines on, on our dress codes and things. But also housekeeping of joining online meetings promptly and logging on a couple of minutes beforehand to help you as the organiser or somebody else that's the organiser to start on time. And like we've mentioned before, use the technology just to have a five minute coffee break with, with colleagues. We, we do it in the facility without even knowing. However, in the isolation side of things where we are currently, you know, that face to face conversation just to clear your head can actually be key. And remember, what we are trying to say is, even though we are part in these times, we are still a team and we still need to support and operate as a team. Next slide, please. So there is the framework that we support com companies with and we can support yourselves with. But I really want to start, like I've said, we need to start right at the start in these new times of the vision and mission. 
and what do we actually want to achieve right at this moment in time and rethink what our values are and how do we need to treat each other and set ourselves up to be successful working remotely. Moving forward from that, we can then start to define roles and responsibilities, organisation maturities and really capture that change in culture. Next slide, please. We can support that through workshops, through helping develop your measures and, and working alongside you. But what we always say is it has to be relevant for you as a business and for your team members. And it's about understanding what's required, what's relevant, and then choosing the right technology to support you and your team members through your changes. Next slide, please. So, okay. a little bit on me. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you very much then, Darren. Uh, we've got time for a couple of questions, Darren, before we go to the final stage. Um, first question, my workforce profile is quite old. How do I support them adopting this new way of working? I think it, it goes back to a little bit what Tim answered on, on, on one of his questions is it's really about getting, giving them the understanding of what it is, uh, of what the technology is out there, because it could be fear. It could be a fear factor of, you know, I've certainly working on shop floors and things for many years is if it's completely new to you, then it, there's two levels. You can accept the change and go along with it, or you could actually try and fight it. And it's about giving them an understanding of one, how it can benefit, it's going to benefit the company and the business, but also their part to play in it. Mm -hmm. And them sort them get them, them people have vast amount of experience in how the usually the areas are working and the business is working. So use them and support and support them. They can be actually the catalysts of change because really understanding what they actually need and the processes need that we need to think of when we bring in technologies in. So it, it goes back to, you know, to knowing the people and actually speaking to them and making them feel comfortable and an understanding of, of that. Okay. Thank you, Darren. Um, uh, this is a good question. Um, and the question is during my career, I have been in many situations, even at the MTC where there were situations that I believe could only be resolved with a face-to-face -face meeting. Otherwise, we face losing a business opportunity. Do you believe the new technology we, can, we have can be used in high-value sales situations that require both commercial and technical evaluation? Hmm, that's a good question. That. That's a very good question. I would, I would, I would say yes, certainly in the, a face-to-face -face conversation, to, in, in, in this is only my opinion in my mm -hmm. experience it is, is fantastic is great and is the best way because you can read each other you can actually sit down and have that face to face but in the times that we are on the video calls and things like that that is at this moment in time that is the the only way and the best way to do so so i believe yes it is important to do so and it can can be done again it's about how do you set it up to be as successful as possible? Okay. So I think it's, it's a very good question and there is circumstances where potentially face-to-face -face is the best, is, is the best way to close a deal or whatever it may, may be. But if that mm -hmm. option is taken away from us, then we need to do the next best thing. Yeah. And can't, we can't handshake on the deal, though, can we? We can't. We can't. We can't <laughs> handshake, but we can give a thumbs up and a nod, and that's probably at this moment in time the best we can do at this moment. <laughs> okay, Darren. Um, we've got another question here. What lessons have we learned? Now, this might be for Tim actually. Uh, Tim on the line. What lessons have we learned for using digital technology to demonstrate machines or train overseas from the UK? Um, I mean, I think the. Uh, I mean the. the there's a wide range of tools in addition to the, the sort of collaboration tools that we've talked about here that are, are particularly geared up to uh, being able to support equipment uh, that's that, that's um, you know spread across the world and uh, you know use of things like some of the low cost uh, or lower cost wearable devices but also dedicated software that's that's there for uh, for providing maintenance support and file sharing 
for somebody who might be actually working on a machine in a remote environment. So it, 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 it's always going to be difficult if the person doing the work doesn't necessarily have the skill set to do that and you're trying to guide them remotely. But there's some really good tools out there with with uh, functionality that's particularly geared to supporting uh, remote problem solving uh, remote expert uh, knowledge transfer and sharing of documentation um, so that there, there you know there there are good tools out there to do that i think uh, the shift from going from a, uh, a situation where you'd normally send an expert out there to one where you've either got to work with client engineers or, or, or the likes um, to be able to share that information mm -hmm. is, is, is a challenge. There's no doubt about it. But there is, there, there, there's a lot of technology that supports that, um, which, uh, which can, can help that going forward. And also in terms of being cost effective as well. So if a machine goes down, if you've yeah. already put in place the support capabilities, you've got the document documents ready you've got the you know that the the end user has a device uh, uh, that, that that allow them to work with the software then that can can be a very cost effective way of diagnosing problems quickly and then deciding whether it's it's a, it's a more serious problem or not okay thank you and one final question i think again for you tim this one working from distance is it possible to project timetable and how best should one organize this so just say that one again. Now. Working from a distance, is it possible to project timetable and how best should one organize this? Um, I, I think it is. I, I mean, if, if I understand the, the, the question correctly, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, sort of remote project planning and managing or, or, uh, people in, in, in that environment, the tools that we've talked about, the collaboration tools, obviously are, you know, they, they're, they're as much right. used in the, yeah, they've the all office. got capability to organise that. Exactly, and I, yeah. and I suppose yeah. it's whether whether we're talking more about specific project uh, related tools, and there are other su suites of tools, uh, some cloud-based, uh, uh, I'm going to say PM tools, project management tools, mm -hmm. yeah. that that can be can work quite well in, t in in team environments, but the basic functionality, I think, is still within the. the the types of tools we've described it's um as i say there is there's a wealth of them out there and and the, and the five we talked about are, are literally just a you know a, a, a small sample yeah. Um, yeah. so i do i do think it is possible i think it is adapting to a change in the way we work um and i think that that, that takes a bit of time okay thanks Tim. right um time's moving on so can we just quickly move on to the final part of the webinar please We can deliver value to businesses quickly. Working with clients, strength their businesses. Using their challenges and the technology that's right for them. £50 million worth of the latest manufacturing technology. Fresh thinking that you could not access any other way. Doing things out of the ordinary is not out of the ordinary for us. Working with MTC has been fantastic. I believe this is a smart approach to business. We've turned over 30% more orders. We actually haven't employed anybody else. We've managed to double our turnover in a period of two years without increasing our overhead costs. We focus on helping great British manufacturing get even better. Okay, um, and that was just a brief video on the manufacturer support services and how we um, um, support you, the manufacturers. Um, just to uh, update you on our uh, program for webinars we have another one in a week's time um, supply chains business not as usual uh, with same format on the 23rd of June we've got maintain productivity in a COVID-19 environment and on the 30th of June uh, robotics and automation practical and affordable steps so if you would like to register that for those we'll be sending the registration details out shortly and just a final word um, one thing this this uh, opportunity the opportunity of working from home and remotely has given us it's given us the opportunity to work on the business and not in the business thank you very much for listening hope to see you again soon bye bye <laughs>